Yo, hello everyone and welcome back again to a brand new video. Building apps often requires database integration. This tutorial delves into connecting Flutter apps to various databases, empowering developers to access, retrieve, and manipulate data effectively within Flutter applications. So guys, let's get started. Before we start with this video, make sure to watch it from now till the end so you have the full information. So guys, for this specific video, we are going to talk about database and specifically we are going to talk about the MySQL database and how to connect it with Flutter mobile apps. So starting with this article that will help us and guide us through this specific tutorial, let's start by going on it step by step. So the first thing is introduction. To connect a Flutter mobile app with a MySQL database, you will need to follow several steps. Here is a general outline of the process. The first thing is set up the MySQL database. So install and configure a MySQL server on your hosting provider or a local development environment. You can simply find it on your browser. So here it is. Click on MySQL and make sure to download it. Click on download as you can see right here. Click on it and simply make sure to simply choose whether you want to try it for free and or anything else let's try it for free and here choose one of these so there is several ones and install it and this is basically it this is how you can get mysql then create a database and tables so create a new database for your mobile app define tables and schemas for within the database to store your data then you will need a backend API. So you have to create a backend API using a server side technology like Node.js, Python, PHP, or any other suitable language framework. The API will handle database connections and provide endpoints for your Flutter app to interact with the database. Establish a connection. So in your Flutter app, you will need to establish a connection to your backend API. You can use libraries, libraries like HTTP or DO to make HTTP requests to your API endpoints. CRUD operation. Implement CRUD, create, read, update, and delete operations in your backend API to interact with MySQL database. So you can create endpoints for creating, retrieving, updating, and deleting records. Data serialization. Serialize and deserialize data between your Flutter app and the API coming from it, include JSON or XML. There is also API security. You have to implement security measures like authentication and authorization to protect your API endpoints. Testing. Test your API endpoints through to Throughly, throughly, so ensure they work as expected. Here's a simplified example using Flutter and the HTTP back package to make HTTP requests to a hypothetical backend API. So as you can see here, it is made by C Sharp, and here it is the code. So import dot convert import package HTTP slash HTTP dot dots as HTTP. Replace with your API URL. So here you should simply URL of your API must be replaced in here. So find a string here, and here we keep it as it is. Everything should be as it is here. Everything here has to be as it is, but here data process successfully. So here everything has to be done like that. So simply this is how you can test your API if it is working or not and checking the endpoint if it is working or not as well. So just copy this, click here, post it in your VS Code as an example, open a new file, a new text file. It can be selected language, C sharp. Let's make sure it is C sharp. Yep, it is. So here we go, C sharp and paste it. And now as you can see, simply all you need to do is to debug it. Here we go. You have to find the connection. So install the on the extension I mean. So here we go, let's wait for it. Install on C sharp. And it can be taking a little bit of time, not that much, but it will take a little bit of time. So now let's just wait a little bit and it should be installed in a few seconds. So here it is. It has been done successfully. So now all we need to do is to run it again. So let's do that. Debug, uh, run and debug. Let's run it in extension for CSAP. Let's just run it here. And basically now all we need to do is run again. 
here we need to find uh, with the comments so there is a lot of things to actually download but in general in case you had like c sharp downloaded it will be straightforward and the debug should be in here in the console and the terminal as well it will help you both of them so you can run both uh, here or there and see if your api is actually working if it's achievable or not if not it will tell you that it is failed to post data to api if yes the data was posted successfully so these are the two conditions that will be shown to you so to finish with that this is only note that this is a simplified example and you should add error handling validation and security features according to your specific requirements so in case you're not that good with it you can simply just give it to chat gpt so here we go let's open chat gpt on open ai here post it and i can tell it literally um this is a simplified example and you should add here we go and let's see so absolutely this code provides a basic structure for fetching data from an api and posting data to it using dot http package so now it will add literally everything we want so here error handling wrap request in validation security code optimization sample modification and here it is so remember these modifications are just starting points adapt them based on your specific project requirements and consider additional security measures so as you can see here they have added a lot of new things to the code so it can have security measures uh, error handling validation and code optimization as well at the same time so don't like uh, say no to chat gpt uh, i mean chat gpt is very very good to help us solve a lot of problems and this one is a really really good example to show you how chat gpt can help us to manage to connect our flutter with mysql and check the api if it is working or not and this is another article from the java perspective on how to add like uh, the database using java and flutter at the same time well it can be really really uh, like different than the other which is here using dart and php but it's just the differentiation of uh, scripts but in general it's the same concept the same thing just the script language different that's it but in general you just have to feel like to keep the same idea you need api the security you need stuff like that and by the end you will notice that the same code is just being replicated but in a different language or in a different script in language so this is basically it for today's video guys I hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe and if you have any more questions don't don't be sh like afraid just write your questions down below in the comment section i will read all of them and try to answer the best or the most that i can so thank you guys a lot for watching and see you guys in the next tutorial